Hey guys, what's up and welcome to another Xbox 360 tutorial. In this tutorial I want to show you how to make your own wireless receiver for Xbox 360 controllers and all you need is just a old Xbox 360 where you can take off the RF module which communicates with the controller. The Xbox 360 can also be damaged, it can have the red ring of death, it doesn't matter, you just need the wireless module from the front. Then you will also need a wireless controller and optionally a play and charge kit. The play and charge kit is therefore to sync the wireless controller with the homemade wireless receiver. So you don't need to have this but it's better because then you don't have to sync the controller with the wireless receiver before you plug it into your PC. And you will also need an old USB cable you don't care about because we will have to cut it. And it needs to have a USB 2.0 male connector and the other side doesn't matter because we will cut it here. Then further you will need a diode and I would recommend using a 5.1 volt Sina diode but you can use any diode you want to, you could also use a LED but if you don't use a diode your board won't power on and I will show you how such a diode looks like. So this is a 5.1 volt Sina diode and it has one reverse direction so you can check the reverse side direction with that little black stripe here on the diode so from left to right it locks the current and from right to left it does not lock the current. So it matters in which direction you solder it. If you do it the wrong way your board won't turn on. Then you will also need some screwdrivers to open up your old Xbox 360. If you don't know how there are a lot of tutorials here on YouTube just check them out. Then further it's also good to have some little scissor to cut all the wires. And then you need some solder because we have to solder the wires from the USB cable to this board here. And for this you will also need to have a soldering iron. You can use any soldering iron you want to. If you want to buy one you can also buy a cheap one so that one did cost $10 in the electronic store. Then it's also good to have some flux because then you get better soldering joints and you can take um, soldering honey or any other flux. And now we will take this thing here off and then we will start soldering. Okay, so now you can see the wireless receiver module and to take it off you have to open up three screws. One on the left top corner, on the right top corner and one is under that plastic thing here. So now just screw them out and take this thing here off. So I will do this now. Number one. And here comes number two. I just lost number three. Okay. And after the screws are out you can just pull it off. Okay guys, so now we have to cut the USB cable. Now you have to cut off the end which is not the USB 2.0 male connector because we'll have to att attach this to the computer. So for me it's just a mini USB connector at the end and just cut it off. And now we have to remove the black isolation and get out the four USB wires. So just cut the um, black isolation and then remove it with your fingernails. So here we go. Now you should see four wires, a red one, a white one, a green one and a black or blue one. So the colors are depending on the USB cable you're using. And now we have to de-isolate all the cables. So the white cable is mostly data plus, the green one is mostly data minus, the red one is mostly 5 volts plus and the black or blue one is mostly ground. Okay, now you take a little scissor or your fingernails and start de-isolating all four wires. Just make a little cut and pull the isolation coating off with your fingernails or with the scissor and try not to damage the core copper wires inside. Here comes number two, number three, okay and here comes number four. Okay, after you've done this we have to tin coat all the wires, therefore you take your soldering iron and some solder and now you heat up the wires from the bottom side, then you wait a few seconds until they are hot and then you apply the solder from the um, top side and then the solder should run through the wire and then it's completely tinned. So let's try this with the first one. Okay, so first heat it up from the bottom side, so here we go. Heat it up a second and then just apply the solder from the top side and the solder should run through the wire and then it's completely tinned. And now you just do this for all four wires.
Okay, after you're done it should look like this, so all four wires are tinned and now we can start soldering those wires to the wireless receiver. And now if you click on the link in the description you will get to a written tutorial where you can find a wiring diagram. We will just soldier it like in the diagram and we will start with the pin left outside. Okay, now take your 5 volt diode and soldier it in reverse direction to the board. That means the black stripe on your diode should face the pins on the board. But first take a scissor or something to cut the metal leg to make the diode a little bit shorter like you can see here. So as you can see the right one is shorter than the left one. And now you soldier it in reverse direction to the board on the left outside pin. So here we go, take your soldering iron, make the pin hot and then attach the um, diode to the pin. There's enough soldier on the pin, so um, I, you don't need to apply additional soldier. So this should be okay now. You can also use flux to get better soldering joints. I will use flux for the next three points. So I will apply some soldering honey. It is called honey because it has the same consistence like honey. Just apply a little bit on the pins and then it would be good to have a brush to distribute all the um, flux. But uh, you can also do this with your fingers, so just distribute the flux a little bit on the pins. But before we soldier the next three pins, we will connect the diode to the red wire of the USB cable. The red wire on the USB cable should be the 5V plus cable which powers the board. So here we go. Just take a tinned cable and solder it to the um, other end of the diode. Therefore you can put some solder on your soldering iron which makes it a little bit easier. And then you just take the red cable and solder it to the other end of the diode. So here we go. So it doesn't look that good but I'm pretty sure that it is working. Okay, so this should be okay now. Okay, and now we only have to solder the other three wires to the board. Just do it like it's shown in the wiring diagram. And if you're not 100% sure of the wires of the USB cable, it would be the best thing to take a multimeter and compare it with the USB pinout and see if those colors are correctly and then just solder them to the board. Okay, after you have successfully soldiered those points, just recheck them that you ain't got any soldering bridges which short out your USB port. And then I rec recommend using some hot glue to fix the soldering points. So just add some hot glue and it will stay in place. And this can also be easily removed, so just glue them down to the board. Here we go. Okay, after you've hot glued your soldering joints, you can also use some additional isolation tape to isolate the soldering joints. Just wrap it around. I know it does not look good, but I don't care about that because I already have two of those receivers and I will just take this here apart because I don't need three of them. And here we go, just wrap it around. And then we'll take a wire strap to fix the tape. And now just take a wire strap and put it over the isolation tape so it won't come off and then it should be good protected. Okay, and after you're done it should look like this, hopefully a little bit better, and now we can go to the PC and test it. Okay, after you have successfully built your wireless receiver, you open up your favorite web browser and click at the link in the description. This should redirect you to this driver download page, and here you have to choose your operating system. Now, if you're using Windows 7, take Windows 7, if you're using Vista, take Windows Vista, if you're using Windows XP, take Windows XP, but if you're using Windows 8 like me, you have to download the Windows 7 drivers and you also have to watch out if you have a 32-bit system or a 64-bit system. I use Windows 8 64-bits, that's, that's why I have to download this here. Now you just do a right click on download, go to save target as and save it anywhere on your desktop. Now wait for the download to finish. And then just um, double click the exe file. This should open up the setup menu here. It's the Microsoft Xbox 360 accessory setup. Just accept this agreement and press next. Okay, so after it's installed you can press finish. And now just attach the wireless receiver to your computer using any free USB port. Okay, I've done it now. And now you can go to start, control panel and device manager. And here you should see a unknown device. 
So for me it's here and you can see that it has a yellow sign and it's called unknown device. Now do a right click on this here and go to update driver software. Okay, now you go to browse my computer for the driver software. And now just um, go to let me pick from a list of device drivers on my computer. Here press next. And then you go to half disk. Okay, now you go to browse. And now you need to browse for the um, Microsoft Xbox 360 accessories folder. It's um, under your main hard drive. And then you go to program files. And then it must be under Microsoft Xbox 360 accessories. Then press open. And in there you should have a xusb21.inf file. And now just unmark it and go to open. Press OK. And now you can see here three things. Microsoft Xbox 360 controller for Windows, um, wireless controller via play and charge kit or wireless receiver for Windows. We will take the wireless receiver for Windows, it's the last one. And now just press next. And here you can see some warning, just ignore it and press yes again. And as you can see, Windows has successfully updated your driver software. Okay, now you have to sync your um, Xbox 360 controller with this homemade um, wireless receiver. What you can do now is um, attach it via play and charge kit to your computer, then it should automatically um, sync with the um, homemade wireless receiver. Or if that does not work for you, you have to take the wireless receiver, um, reattach it to your Xbox 360, sync your controller once again, and then you can um, take it back to the computer and this should work. So now I will um, start up my controller and see if it works. Okay, it has um, synced with the um, wireless receiver. And now I can go to control panel and if I now go to devices and printers okay just wait a minute so now you should see your Microsoft Xbox 360 wireless controller which should be synced with your Xbox 360 wireless homemade receiver and now just to right click on it and go to game controller settings to test it and here you go to properties and here you can test the joystick and the buttons and as you can see it's just working fine so this was my tutorial on how to make a self-made Xbox 360 wireless receiver for Windows I hope you enjoyed it and if you have any questions just feel free to ask and leave a comment under this video I hope you enjoyed it and if you enjoyed it please leave a like and subscribe and as always thanks for watching and see you again in my next videos bye